Good evening, everybody. Welcome to the Maximizing, Maximizing Your Miles webinar. Uh, my name is Sam Fetcher and I'm the technical producer tonight. A couple of things before we get started on the webinar. You guys are all muted, but you will be able to ask questions by typing them in on the questions pane. Uh, you'll see that on the right-hand side of your control panel. Um, click the little triangle and then it should open up. Um, we will be stopping intermittently throughout the webinar for questions. Um, depending on how they come in, we might have to clump things together if the topic is the same, because we're kind of expecting a big crowd tonight. And I will turn it over to our two presenters and they can introduce themselves to you. Hi everyone, uh, my name is Emily Barclay and I'm here with my husband, Rick. Hello. Um, we are thrilled to be a part of Kappa's Lifestyle Learning Series. This is, I think, our fourth year um, doing a presentation for Kappa um, and uh, really excited to share um, some tips and tricks and strategies with you. Uh, for those of you who don't know us in real life, that's me, Hendrik, um, about a year, maybe two years ago now, so pretty accurate. I am actually wearing glasses at the moment, so I guess that's pretty accurate. Um, just to give you an idea of who we are, um, we're a husband-wife team that have been um, sort of extensively traveling, I would say, for about four and a half, almost five years now. Yeah. And um, just have a, a lot of fun things to, to share with you tonight. Um, uh, just as a quick disclaimer, the information in our webinar is for educational purposes only. Please um, don't use it um, as financial or credit advice. Um, you know, we can only speak to our own experiences and just want to make sure that that's clear from the beginning. Um, when we tell the story about how we sort of got involved in thinking about points and airline miles and all sorts of things, um, we always like to start with this story. Um, we had recently bought our home and we're looking at purchasing some outdoor furniture uh, to use in the backyard. And uh, Rick ended up finding a really great deal using, I believe it was Ultimate Rewards Points. Yeah, it was the points you can earn through Chase. Uh, to purchase Amazon gift cards. And so we ended up using those points to buy Amazon gift cards, which then bought us our patio furniture. So um, it was a really great way to, to use these points uh, to get something for free. And that sort of sparked the bug when Rick realized that perhaps there was maybe a more cost effective way to use our points um, to be more efficient with um, how we were using them. He realized that you know, travel was really the way to go. We could get a lot more bang for our buck that way. <clears throat> um, for those of you who have been with us before, we always like to do a little update of where we have been in the past year since our last webinar. So our last one was in October of 2017. Um, and then this is just a quick word cloud of all of the places we have been since then, um, which is sort of ridiculous <laughs> when you really look at it. I, I have to pinch myself when I think about it, um, all the places we've been able to visit um, in the past year. Uh, just a few quick pictures, um, some of the highlights. We were able to go to Fiji last year for Thanksgiving. Um, we took a big trip to Europe at Christmas time. We went up to Santa Barbara in the spring um, and then went to Asia, Australia, New Zealand. Mm -hmm. uh, this summer, we also uh, did some domestic stuff. We went to New York City uh, this year also and uh, St. Louis for some Cardinals baseball. Tonight, we're gonna to be talking a little bit about um, how we travel, how we do it affordably. Uh, we'll do a, a quick peek of the, the latest trip that we were just on um, and how we did that. Um, we'll give you some information about our favorite credit cards to use for travel, um, and then how we go about planning our trips. We realize that a lot of people know that they have maybe credit cards or they know they have points, but they don't exactly know how to use them. So we're hoping we can give you some tips to think about when you're doing the travel planning. And then we'll also have time for questions and answers. Um, just some quick photos from our last trip. We were just in Portland over Labor Day weekend. Our anniversary um, is uh, always celebrated over Labor Day weekend. So it's a pretty great excuse for us to get to go on an anniversary trip every year. Um, we love Portland and have been a number of times, but uh, went again um, for our anniversary trip. So those were just some highlights that we had there. You're gonna have to excuse Rick. Um, we had Postmates sent over for dinner. We thought it would arrive in time. Um, he just went to grab it from, from the guy. Um, he's gonna be talking to us um, a little bit about how we did this by the numbers. And Rigby, watch out. Sorry if you can hear the click clacking of the dog in the background. Okay, so to give you a quick overview of how we would have done this weekend and how we made it more affordable. 
on the left hand column you can kind of see a projected cost of what a, a three-day weekend trip would cost um, we flew southwest so it'd be around 360 dollars for two people round trip um, you know lax to portland is is not a very expensive flight for us and then we stayed at airbnb so we stayed at this person's house we've stayed there a couple times and it's only 50 dollars a night so three nights so total, it would have cost, again, if we weren't using points, around $510 just to do the flights in the Airbnb, um, just for the travel costs. However, what we actually paid, I should say paid, was um, on Southwest, we used 12,000 miles. So 6,000 one way for Emily and 6,000 one way home for Emily. Um, I actually fly for free and we'll get to that a little bit later and how that happens. Um, we stayed in Airbnb and we, you know, spent three nights just 150 dollars but we used our capital one venture points and we wrote those off which is a way to do and we'll talk about that later so the travel was basically free the airbnb was basically free but we still had to pay the taxes so we had four legs between the two of us and it came out to 22 dollars and 40 cents for us to spend a three-day weekend in portland now I'm looking at this and I'm realizing, was it 15,000 venture points or was it 150,000? I believe that might have been 15, a typo. 15,000. 15, okay. I just wanted to make sure that I didn't make a typo. All right. So when we're thinking about credit card points, there's a card for that. Everything that you're doing, um, you can be earning points and miles for. Um, you can earn airline points, you can earn hotel points, travel points, cruise lines. You can get a credit card that will help you get Disney tickets. Um, there was a credit card for a little while where you could get new iPhones as your sign-up bonus. There are plenty of cards that do cash back that will give you gift cards. And then we've even found one that does really great um, investment funds um, as your rewards. This is just a quick example of some of the airline cards that are available. Um, most major airlines will have a card um, that you can join and become a part of their loyalty program. Um, these are some examples of hotel cards, Hyatt, Hilton, the big ones that you think about, Marriott, uh, which just combined with SPG. So all of these cards, again, the hotel and airline cards, they all have, and you've probably seen it, whether you're on a flight or on the commercials, they all have sign-up bonuses. And the sign-up bonuses can change over the year as well. They run promotions, so you can always sign up for a brand new card, and you can always get the sign-up bonus. Um, there's a couple little, you know, we call small print things to that. But the basic idea, if you've never had it before, you are eligible for a sign-up bonus for any one of these cards. So we wanted to talk through uh, just two quick card things that we really enjoy, um, two that we use um, most often and maybe are easy uh, and accessible for a lot of people. The first is the Southwest Rapid Rewards card. We wanted to talk about this because we used it in particular to go to Portland. Um, you can see there the details about the sign-up bonus. When you sign up right now, you can earn 40,000 miles after you spend $1,000 in three months. Um, the perks, you already get three bags on Southwest. The annual fee is $99. Um, and then when you're booking with Southwest, the rates are based on the distance and when you are booking. So if you're wondering, how did I fly for free using points on Southwest, is that there is what we call the best travel deal ever. Um, and on Southwest, there's something called the Companion Pass. Now, if you achieve in any year from, you know, January 1st to December 31st, if you achieve 110,000 Southwest Rapid Rewards miles in one year, you are automatically earned, and you can see in the screenshot we put here, congrats, you've earned the Companion Pass. Um, you will get that. And then if you've earned it as a member, you can choose a companion that can always fly for free with you. So that's great. But the hard part clearly is you have to achieve 110,000 miles um, in one year. Uh, the good news is, is that a sign up bonus and the points you earn for that will count towards that 110. So in the previous slide, you saw that right now the sign up bonus is 40,000 Southwest points. So you sign up, you get your 40,000 towards the 110. Now, obviously there's a lot of spending, a lot of different things that are required to get to 110, but there's other tricks you can do, especially if you're, if you're gonna use a business card or if you actually do fly in Southwest frequently, um, you can earn a lot of points pretty quickly. But um, we did find a way to get earn 110,000 one year. And um, that's why we are currently, well, I am currently a free traveler. Yeah, so you can see at the bottom of my companion, good through the end of the year. So we're trying to max it out. 
All right, so a lot of people have probably seen the commercial for the Capital One Venture Card. And you see Jennifer Garner, and she's talking to you about no blackout dates, fly whenever. And you might be a little bit confused about how that card works or um, what exactly it gets for you. Um, but it is one of our favorites, so we definitely wanted to talk about it tonight. So the Capital One Venture Card, um, you sign up with Capital One, and you can earn 50,000 points right now after you spend $3,000 in three months. When you use your Capital One card, you earn two points per dollar on all of your purchases, anywhere, all the time. The first year of the card is free, and then after that, the annual fee goes up to $95. Um, so Rick is going to talk a little bit about how the rewards points work, why there are no blackout dates, and why it's so great. Yeah. So this is a little different because you are reimbursing yourself from your travel expenses. Uh, you know, when you get a Hilton card or a Southwest card, those are points that are very specific for their travel company, all right? Hilton points, you can only redeem at Hilton hotels. The Capital One Venture gives you points, that, like I said, can reimburse you for a variety of expenses, including the list we have here. Um, any flight, cruise, travel expense, limo, ferry, bus, taxi, I mean, your, your Ubers or your Lyfts, those are all travel expenses, and you can use your Venture points to reimburse yourself for those expenses. So um, on our chart here, you can see $199 Airbnb. It's almost very similar to what we did in Portland where we had $150 Airbnb. Well, it would take you, if you add two zeros to the end, you're gonna see how many points it would take you under Capital One to redeem yourself, all right? Um, so it kind of works that way where it's not necessarily partnered to one company, but it's any travel expense. Um, and you could do it for car rentals, like we said, for all these things. So we have a little screenshot we wanted to show you as well um, of something. So you can see in 2017, you can see right here the date and then the, the credit travel reward and then the subtracted amount. You would log on to your Capital One Venture account. You'd use your points. It has a whole list of expenses or travel that you would like to write off and redeem yourself. And you can see that they basically just put the money back into your account to re um, reimburse yourself for that travel related expense. And that's another great way to cut down on your travel expenses. So it is okay to feel a little nervous. Uh, we always, the, th the first question we always get is what happens to your credit score? Um, how many cards can I have? How many cards can I apply for? What should I do with the card? I mean, those are all very, very good questions. Um, and we will answer some of these right here. Like, Credit score, I mean, everybody has a different story. I cannot say with a 100% certainty or anybody can, um, will applying for a credit card affect your score? Um, it could, but it also could stay the same. Um, it's not gonna go up through your application because it is a hard credit pull. Um, but for some people, um, it won't affect them at all. Like I said, really pulling um, the credit score or getting a hard credit pull is only 10% of your, of your credit score anyways. 75% of your credit score is really, are you paying it on time um, and the amount you have um, lended out to you right now? So it's such a minimal factor into your credit score that it really doesn't hurt you um, too badly. And then again, if you show positive behavior with the credit card, it's gonna go right back up anyways, if you have a small little dent in your credit score from an, um, an application, but it's only a couple points anyways. How many cards can you have? Different companies, different banks have different rules to this. You know, American Express kind of tries to cut you off at around four, but there's a couple work away, workarounds where people have five or six. Um, but there's so many different credit card companies out there that, you know, if you really want to go aggressive and intense about this, you can get a ton. Um, I know some people throughout different blogs and, you know, different forums that have up towards the 30 to 40. And I know some people just like to keep it at, you know, four or five, it's completely up to you, but it's as much as you want to track it and manage it. Um, how many cards can you apply for is the same thing. I mean, Chase has a very clear rule right now where you can only have five credit card applications within the past 24 months. And if you have, if you're applying for your six within the past 24 months, they're going to cancel you. Um, and that's Chase's rule. American Express is very different. Bank of America is very different. So um, there is a little bit of a restriction to that, but I don't think any you know, regular person's gonna have any trouble um, applying for a card. And then keep or cancel, that's up to you. Um, the annual fees are a real thing. Uh, a little trick I should say is that sometimes you can call in and get the annual fee waived. I've had that happen between Emily and I many times where 
they just want to keep us as customers because it looks good for their bottom line. So they will waive the annual fee. And sometimes they say, no, they won't waive it. And we choose to cancel it. Um, it's really up to you and you know how much you really want to keep the benefits of that card. It never helps or never hurts to ask for a, a retention offer. Mm -hmm. uh, so I always uh, ask Rick this question, like this is really great, but how do we actually put the points to use? Where do we sort of start from? And so we hope that this is sort of a practical way to see how we begin uh, booking our travel and thinking about using our points. So we knew last summer, um, this previous summer, we were gonna go to Asia. And we knew we needed to get to Asia, so we thought, okay, what's the best way? Um, we could have gone to Tokyo, we could have gone through many different places, but I found uh, flights to Hong Kong through Alaskan Airlines. So we actually flew on Cathay Pacific, but I used Alaska Airlines points. And when we searched it up, there happened to be a, two available, and we should brag here a little bit, two available business class seats. So I put that cheesy um, on us of a direct flight to Hong Kong. So our actual goal was to get to Vietnam. That's where we needed to get to, but Hong Kong was a perfect um, place to visit. We actually stayed there for two nights and then it was basically our way to get to Asia so we can get on our way to Vietnam, which is super easy from Hong Kong. So it was really flexible on our end. We just, like I said, we, we just chose Hong Kong. Um, we had two free night certificates for our stay. We actually stayed at the Intercontinental Hong Kong an IHG credit card rewards. We had free net certificates from that credit card. And we both used 50,000 points each and we got to Hong Kong in business class and then stayed at a really, really fancy hotel that we would never stay in if we had to pay for that ever. Yeah, because we each used a free night and mm -hmm. uh, can't beat that. Coming up. And the same idea. I mean, just so you know what we've planned, um, this Christmas break for us, we are gonna go to Mexico City and as we already stated, our Southwest Companion Pass is ending at the end of this year. Sad news for us for the first time. So we need to maximize me flying for free. So we are gonna take Southwest to Mexico City. And then this exact same thing as Portland. We are gonna stay at an Airbnb there. It was only 25 bucks a night. So we're, I think we're staying five nights, it's $150. We use 15,000 points on venture, we write it off. We're only paying the taxes to get to Mexico City. and. The Airbnb is basically free for us. This was my typo. I put too many points. Okay. Sorry about that, everybody. All right. So, Rick, where do you start when you're thinking about booking a trip? Like, we're going to Asia. What made you decide to even look at Hong Kong as an option? Where? How do you even start? Um, it was a major city close to Vietnam. And how did you figure out that it was easy to get from Hong Kong to Vietnam? How did you even figure that out? Um, that was just through a lot of research, just finding that, you know, it was only a two and a half, three hour flight from Hong Kong to, uh, to get to Ho Chi Minh City or Saigon. So, and it was really affordable. I think it was only like $60 to get from Hong Kong on a Vietnamese airline. So it was within reach. So I just started there and I just researched a little bit. Is it fair to say that you sort of bookend the trip? You start with the beginning, you yes. figure out the end and then fill in the middle? Yeah, I just kind of fill it in, but that way, yeah, so I could use my points the best way. Uh, just like disclosure with that, so he had found us a really great flight home from Auckland, New Zealand, so we knew that that was the end goal, and then filled in everything sort yeah. of in between. So we flew into Hong Kong, we flew home from New Zealand, we didn't know how we were gonna connect those points, and we made it work. I think you even had the New Zealand part first. No. No? Okay. All right. So a few travel tips just to share with you guys um, as you're thinking about what you'd like to do. Um, you've heard us talk about it a few times tonight already. We would just really love Airbnb. Um, we think it gives a really great experience no matter where you go. We've used it all over the world in so many different countries and so many different places. And it has always led to some of the most genuine and authentic, wonderful experiences that we've had on our trips. And I would add to this we have made friends like legitimate friends that we will keep in touch with and go see multiple times over that puts a more personal connection onto any place that you're trying to travel which i think completely changes your experience totally 
Um, you can sort on Airbnb by what you'd like to do, the cost, the location, if you want to have the whole place to yourself, if you want a private room, if you don't mind sharing a room, you can sort of filter through all of that. Um, something new that Airbnb is doing is also Airbnb experiences. I have never done one of those, um, but from the people that I've spoken to that have, they've really enjoyed it. They've said it's uh, just been a really cool way to see something local in the area. I have. You have? Yeah, I took surf lessons in uh, Oh yeah. In Changu. I forgot about that. Yeah. <laughs> so how was your Airbnb experience? It was great. I mean, they met where I was supposed to do, and it was super awesome. I forgot about that. Um, if you're interested in using Airbnb and you've never done it before, you can send us a quick email. Um, we have a code and you get $40 off your first stay, um, which is really great. I mean, if you're choosing the right kind of Airbnb, that could be one or two nights. Um, these are just some of the Airbnbs that we've loved that we've stayed in. Um, the bottom, middle, and left photos are um, from our first Airbnb. We stayed in Paris. Um, we stayed in a tree house in Costa Rica. That's the top two photos. Um, and we also have stayed um, at a wonderful Airbnb with a family in Indonesia that we really love. That's one of those groups of people that we go back and see often. We love to search for flights on Google Flights. If you guys haven't checked out Google Flights before, it's really great. Um, it searches multiple airlines at a time similar to like a kayak or uh, an orbit. Um, but we just find it to be really, really easy to use. You can also place an alert on a certain uh, trip that you're interested in and if the price drops Google will let you know about that so definitely recommend uh, checking out Google flights we have discovered in all of our travel whatever that airline companies will track your search history so there have been times where we have been searching for the same flights together um, and I will see a lower price than Rick because he has spent more time looking for that on his computer. So we always recommend try to search using an incognito window. So if you're going to go on to United and look for a new flight, um, do that in an incognito window. Um, so I'm just going to show you quickly how to do that. In whatever internet browser you're in, I like to use Chrome. When you do file, instead of new window or new tab, you're going to do a new incognito window. And it'll show up you've got incognito and that it is private um, and so it won't be saving your browsing history and that way the airlines won't know you've been looking for the same flight over and over and then try to raise the price on you um, something else to think about uh, is booking early uh, we swear by this one the sooner you can book if you're gonna book with points the better um, there are only a certain number of seats per plane that are able to be given out to people using points and award travel. Um, you can typically uh, book a flight about 11 months in advance, 330 days. Um, and so that uh, really makes a difference. We are usually booked about a year in advance for anything that we're gonna be doing because we know we wanna use our points and get those flights that we want. Um, we say this a lot, um, travel is only expensive when it is most convenient for you. If your dates are flexible, your destinations are flexible, like what we were talking about with getting to Asia via Hong Kong, um, you can end up saving money. Um, this is just a, a sort of more concrete example that we've talked about. Um, the first time that we went to Indonesia, it was uh, $450 each one way. Uh, and then we spent about 35,000 points uh, to come home. It was about $1,000 for the two of us to go on that trip. Comparatively, um, we were looking at flights to Syracuse, New York, and that was about $700, $700 per person round trip. So just depending on where you want to go and the timing of it, um, if it's convenient for you, it might be a little bit more expensive, but you got to do what you got to do. At this point, we're going to take a pause. Are there any questions? Uh, there are, I had to mute myself for a second. So can you talk about some maybe everyday methods that people can do to get their points built up in whatever account that they're using? Um, one that I always say to people is, you know, we, we always pay off our credit cards every month. We don't overspend, but we put all of our spending on the credit card. So groceries, gas, uh, restaurants, all that kind of stuff, we are putting on a credit card. We don't ever really use a debit card or cash unless we're going to the farmer's market, to be totally honest. So we're racking up points with every single purchase that we make. And we use specific credit cards 
if we need points in certain areas. There's also, because some people get concerned about, you know, you have to spend $3,000 in a certain time frame to get a sign-up bonus. Well, you can always, there's little things you can do. You can pre-purchase um, gift cards that you know you're gonna use later. So if you wanna buy your Trader Joe's or grocery gift cards or gas gift cards, cause you're gonna continue to buy gas later. Um, you can even prepay your phone bill month in advance, months in advance um, if you need to get the spending for those sign-up bonuses um, worked out. Yeah. Can you pay regular bills with credit cards? Some, yes. Mm -hmm. Like we can do some of ours, but um, some of them cannot. Or they're going to charge me a fee, yeah. and I would rather not pay the fee mm -hmm. to use a credit card. Yeah. Um, here's a question about the Southwest Rapid Rewards um, program and the, the companion pass thing. So she says she opened the Southwest Rapid Rewards and a premier and premier business cards to get the 110,000 points for the companion pass. Now that she has it, can she cancel one of those Southwest cards without losing her points? Yes. Okay. That's awesome. The point, the points for those things are with your Southwest like um, Rapid Award number. They're not part of the credit card anymore. Whatever you earn on the credit card goes into your own account that can't be removed. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's awesome. Um, so here's um, a question about the when you were talking about how the credit card companies limit the number of cards. So when you say credit card companies limit the number of cards, do you mean cards through that one company? or cards through any company? Um, typically, it's cards through the one company. Like I said, American Express will limit you to four personal um, cards. Um, and, and Chase, and like I said, Bank of America, Wells Fargo, they're all going to have that. The only place maybe you could get a little, um, they make it a little weird, is that if you have so many recent, like they're going to pull your credit report when you apply for a card and if, if they see that you've applied for 14 credit cards in the past two months, they may say, we're gonna take a hold on, we don't really wanna offer you one right now. Okay, awesome. Um, and then here's another question that came in. Uh, what do you think about the points guy? Um, we started five years ago, we started with we kind of read his things and it was really helpful and insightful and it was awesome. And then we got really into this and researched and we felt like we were pretty much experts of this thing and he was hiring. And I have no shame telling this story is okay. that we sat in Istanbul, Turkey, and we sent our applications to be bloggers and working for him. And we never heard back from them, but the next week we saw our ideas. Part of the application was to pitch them ideas of things that they should do for content on their website. And then the next week when we were traveling around, we started to randomly see our ideas that we pitched to him on their website and we never heard back from them and they did not respond to us with anything. So I think we have a little personal bias, personal bias vendetta against that so we no longer support that website but it, it was a great source for us when we were yeah absolutely first coming we, up, used, so. we used it a lot when we first got started okay here's another question um this person has both the chase sapphire preferred card and the southwest rapid rewards card when she shops she always pays with the chase card knowing that she can transfer these points to any other airline is that a good strategy, would you think? Or should she just be using the Southwest card if she specifically wants rapid reward points? Yeah, I mean, the only the only benefit of using the Southwest card would be that you could potentially earn towards the companion pass. Um, but I do agree with you, shopping with the Sapphire is probably smarter because there's more flexibility where you can send those points. If you shop with the Southwest card, you're only gonna get rapid rewards points. but I liked the, um, the Sapphire one because I could transfer it to United, Korean Air, Singapore Air, hotels, I mean, anything. So if you value the flexibility of your points, I would go Sapphire 100%. If you're going for that companion pass and you're close, I would definitely do the Southwest. Well, one of the things that I also noted recently, Rick, is that 
one of my hotel partner cards will allow me to transfer those points to the airline as well. So I wasn't necessarily going to be needing it to you get a hotel room, but it had a really big points bonus um, if I signed up for that card. So I thought that was a good deal too. Yep. Okay. So can you comment uh, about using a travel agent? Can you use points if you're working with them? I wouldn't. I've never yeah. used that. I've so been the travel agent. The, yeah, we Rick's the travel agent um, <laughs> for our family. Um, and I don't know if you've ever booked anything for anyone using points. We've booked things using money. Um, the only experience I have using a travel agent is through Kappa. Um, and I know that she uses my like uh, frequent flyer numbers, but I don't think she's ever booked anything for with points for me. Um, so I don't know if we can comment. There are people out there that act as travel agents using your points. They they will they will charge you a fee to take your points and book you travel. So there there is a business for that out there. It's not huge by any means, but I, I think they have that. Don't quote me on this 100%, but I think they have that business because I think if you're going to use a regular travel agent, it's because they have um, access to fares and um, amounts that. We are not privy to. Yeah, like better deals, yeah. packages. This next one, I'm kind of drooling over at the questions, the possibilities. So she writes, okay, you don't like the points guy. Is there anyone else that can help maximize membership miles and American airline miles? Here's the here's the clincher. I have over 400,000 points with each. So, What's the question? I, I don't remember the question. Like we're just here. looking so, for like a resource. Is there anybody else that could help her um, maximize her miles, like maximize using her miles? I mean, the, gosh, I mean, the, there are a bunch of different points people. Um, and, and I would literally probably say, you know, you can, you can even type in maximize my American Airlines miles in probably the first 10 to 20 hits are going to be a bunch of different blogs similar to the points guy mm -hmm. um, that could help with that. But I mean, to be clear, I, I don't think I've looked at those websites in now a couple of years now because I feel like I've already have it in my head. Yeah. So. One that I used um, when I was looking at just to, to check the sign up bonuses is there's a blog called One Mile at a Time. Um, and I think their interface is really easy to use. You can like use a drop down menu to search the credit cards that are available. Um, you can search by type, hotel, airlines, rewards, points, bonus, whatever. Um, and so I think that that is one that potentially could have a lot of really great information. Um, I think it's also worthwhile to look at who Americans' partners are. Um, we've used American uh, in the off season to go to Europe because those points are super valuable in uh, the winter time. So you end up getting sort of a cheaper fare to fly to Europe because it's not peak time, but you might go on um, mm -hmm. Berlin Air. Well, they, that doesn't exist anymore. No, but, they're bankrupt. Um, but kind of looking at the partners that are with American, uh, that could be a really great way to look to maximize those points. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, maybe if she has um, a little bit more specific questions or more detail, maybe can she email you guys directly? Um, totally. So, yep. And, and I'm assuming you'll put your email up. Yep. Okay. We can keep doing questions, but I'll just put this here in case anybody uh, is thinking of something now and they want to email it to us. Yep. Okay. And then here's another question. Do, for accommodations, do you typically use your Capital One Venture card along with Airbnb, unless you're using the points from a hotel-specific credit card? Yeah. I mean, there's that, the Capital One Venture is just one. There's a couple. I mean, there's the Barclay Arrival card, so it's through Barclay Bank. Um, but they have their own version of the Capital One Venture. So there are a couple versions of that Bank of America has their own, Discover has their own. So it's it really also depends on which one you're looking for. Um, but there are multiple versions of that card out there that we will do with Airbnb. Okay. All right, that's all the questions that I have for you right now. Okay. Well, uh, our contact information is up here at the top. Um, if you want that Airbnb credit, like if you've never done Airbnb before and you want some money off because you want to try it, go ahead and send us an email and I'll make sure to get that over to you. Um, when we are on our travels, we do a lot of posting on Instagram um, 
particularly recently, I do a lot of Instagram stories. You can see um, my handle there. Um, that's basically us. Um, we sort of track and try to keep up with uh, our blog. I had really great intentions and then we went to Southeast Asia where there wasn't great internet and I lost you know, my momentum. But um, a lot of the stuff that we've done in the past is on our blog, um, which is there at the bottom. Okay, any other questions, anybody? Um, nothing else, Em. All right, well, thank you all very much. We really appreciate you coming and um, thanks for making it on Wednesday night. And I know there was some confusion on the date. We really appreciate um, everyone who was able to make it. Um, and if you have any questions, just feel free to reach out. Oh, one more question just uh -oh. came in. Right off the press. Uh, do you have any cruising tips? Rick and I have never been on a cruise together. Never. Rick's booked cruises and suggested cruises for other people. I've never done one. Um, we, in the past year, have encouraged um, Rick's parents and my mom. Mm -hmm. Spoiler alert, that's Sam who's talking to you all. Yeah. Um, to go on Viking River cruises, and they've all really enjoyed it. Um, <laughs> so we think that we have helped guide people towards cruises that go uh, and meet their needs. Um, We've never done one, even though the Port of Long Beach is right here and it would be super easy. Yep, I do I do know that there is, I'd have to dig up the name, a, a website out there for last minute discount cruise stuff. So if Ooh. you know you're gonna have four or five days off, like in two weeks and you wanna book a cruise, you can get it at for dirt, dirt, dirt cheap pricing. Um, and that would be especially useful for people who live near the ports or can, could travel free to the ports um, without too much trouble. Um, and if you want, I can get this information to Emily and she can, if you want to email her, I can get it to her and she can pass it along to you guys. I'd have to dig a little to find it. Cool. So, okay, wait. Okay, yep, got it. Okay, Susie, I will send it to you. I can get your email address, I think, off this registration thing. So I'll send it to you. Okay, anybody else? Awesome. Thanks, everybody. Appreciate your time tonight. Have a good rest of your evening. Thank you. Thanks.